If you enjoy what you're doing, help somebody else get involved. We're real excited to have Joe Levine to come here tonight. He is a hound. His call sign is WA4HNL. He said he became a ham in 1962, which is before some of us were born. Not me, but maybe some of you. But he is a pilot. He's a member of the EAA, which owns this building and graciously let us use it. And he's going to tell us what it's about and what it is. We'll uh, start. Uh, EAA is uh, uh, a rather uh, well-established organization, and uh, many have probably heard of it uh, from something other than here. Um, and it began as just an idea in a man's uh, uh, basement and actually in the coal uh, bin of the house. And uh, that was back in 1953. A gentleman by the name of uh, Paul Poperesny. And um, Paul was... Get the right slides up here. Okay. Paul was the founder of EAA, and he had a vision that uh, people wanted to build their own airplanes, and uh, they wanted to restore aircraft, and they wanted to just be involved with aircraft, so not everyone could pilot. Um, and uh, he uh, he sort of uh, put that together, and it grew, and it's grown to uh, quite an organization. Uh, when he uh, retired, uh, his son took over. Oops, this thing jumping ahead, so excuse me if I uh, go back. His son Tom took over for a period of time, uh, and then he retired. We're probably best known for the fly-in at Oshkosh, and uh, I looked at the uh, guard's website, and I was supposed to say something about that. So after this portion, I'll go through some of uh, uh, this year's uh, Oshkosh. But that's a picture from, um, um, no, that's a picture of Tom. Well, there we go. Why does he jump? Anybody know? It must be a timer. Yeah. I'll have to speak a little faster, that's all. <laughs> picture of Oshkosh uh, from um, uh, last year. It's quite a show. You'll get uh, aircraft of every flavor, from military to home builds to ultralights. A picture of uh, two of the RVs, and that's probably one of the most popular aircraft that uh, are being built today. Uh, the gentleman that built these two, um, a gentleman by the name of... Um, Mike Stewart. Mike Stewart. How could I forget Mike? Mike also built the uh, Waco, the Extra, and the Corsair that are hanging here in the hangar. Uh, he was a former member and uh, put those together. Uh, this is an unusual airplane. It was also built by one of uh, our chapter members' fathers, uh, Bernie Shed Shednowski, and uh, uh, they recently sold it. It's actually a three-place airplane called the Dykes Delta. Uh, there were three of them at Oshkosh this year. So you can see the, the progression of some of the aircraft from the fabric and, and, um, um, and metal into what uh, is here, the Lance Air, and uh, it's a, a, a foam airplane, foam and fiberglass, composite. One of the other um, divisions of uh, the EAA. Yet we go back to aircraft like the Saranka, which is about four hangars down, and a uh, beautiful airplane, and uh, restored by one of our chapter members, um, Dwayne Huff. And uh, that flies uh, kids about uh, once a month. So. It's a, a 1946 airplane, still flies like a dream. One of the other divisions, of course, the word Warbirds, and uh, that's if you have deep pockets. <laughs> when you start spending money like uh, two million, two and a half million, and on up, for some of the Warbirds, you've got to have an organization behind you. And of course, the acrobatic aircraft that, that show up at Oshkosh every year. Uh, always uh, a fabulous air show. So it's a convention at Oshkosh, but it's also an air show. One of our other members, uh, Jeff Patnow, who used to be, he's, he's, uh, he's moved now, uh, with a, a small ultralight type of, uh, of uh, home build. And of course, the ultralights. So the five, six divisions of uh, uh, of EAA 
start with the, the ultra lights and they go to the light sport which is relatively new and and uh, this type of aircraft uh, most of them are being built uh, outside of the country the whole idea was to build an affordable airplane something around 75 to 90 thousand dollars they haven't quite made it it's, it's up a little higher so that's that's really what uh, EAA is probably best known for but the chapters themselves are what make EAA function. And we're just one of uh, about a thousand chapters within the, uh, the organization. And all sorts of activities, you know, as the amateur radio community uh, uh, has done, you know, we do things that are fun. Uh, we have the pancake breakfast, we have uh, fly outs. Uh, we do uh, a lot of work with outreach to young people uh, because if, uh, if we don't reach out to the youth, who's going to replace us? And as I look around, we have the same problem in amateur radio, and I'm sure everyone knows that. So, uh, it's, it's been an interesting uh, um, progression from when I started on up through and watching things change within amateur radio and within EAA. And uh, people from all over the country and all over the world come to Oshkosh for that one week period of time uh, uh, for the convention and for the technology that's there and of course for the air shows. All sorts of birds fly to Oshkosh. And uh, the museum. Uh, they have a fabulous museum. I think it's one of the top uh, three in the country. Obviously, the Smithsonian uh, has the originals of uh, many of the aircraft that uh, uh, we all know from history, but uh, Oshkosh within its museum has uh, many of the, the uh, experimental type aircraft that uh, uh, are around, and you can see through uh, the time progression that uh, you know, aviation is still alive and well within the uh, museums. These are all flying aircraft. <coughs> Outside of the museum, uh, they have what's called the Pioneer Airport. It's behind the, the main museum, but it's not on the main runway at uh, Oshkosh. It has its own runway and it's uh, called Pioneer Airport. And every year during the convention, they put together what's called Kid Venture. And uh, it's really a fabulous job. They, they reach out to uh, uh, the youth that are there, and there are a lot of young people, fortunately, and uh, they do a lot of uh, educational things. We fly the, uh, the trimotor. I think many of you participated when uh, we had the Ford trimotor here. We hope to have that back again. It, it travels the country. So uh, we only get it when it's on the East Coast. That and, of course, the B-17. So, uh, again, we'll, uh, we'll do W-4. I'll get it right. W-4 LZU, which is, of course, the, the station here uh, at uh, the hangar. And we have a, a magazine just like uh, QST or uh, 73 or any of the magazines uh, for the amateur radio population. Uh, it's uh, focused on aviation, but there's a technology uh, uh, aspect of a lot of hands-on training that uh, is related to the uh, aviation aircraft builders. And within the chapter, um, as many of you probably know, we're, we have an outreach for the, the kids where we're building three airplanes. I forget which ones I put on the screen. But uh, this is an ultralight um, beaten pole that the kids are building, and they're doing a wonderful job. If you uh, have time one Saturday, or after, um, after the meeting night, if you want to see it, I'd be more than happy to open up the hangar. If we don't train the kids and get them involved, no one's going to be there to replace us. It's a technology, most of these kids have no experience with uh, hand tools. Their parents don't use hand tools. So, giving them an opportunity to, uh, to work with wood, work with uh, metal, and, and do some building, learning how to read plans, 
is a, a totally new experience for the kids. And uh, it's marvelous to watch them as they absorb some of this uh, education. And most of them are really turned on by the aviation aspect. What we do is we pay them $7.50 in credit for every hour that they work on the aircraft. And that's used to, uh, for one of the flying clubs uh, for flying time. So every 10 hours they work, $75. The flying club gives us the airplane with fuel and instructor for that $75. We've had a couple kids get their license. Uh, we've had a bunch of them solo. So it's a, it's a great experience. We also do a summer school right here. And uh, it starts out with uh, model aviation and works its way up. They build toolboxes, they build uh, wing ribs, and, uh, they get some flying time. and. Uh, it's a good experience for them. We're not turning them all into pilots, but we're just opening up that avenue for, uh, for them to see what's going on. And of course, the young eagles. I think everyone has uh, heard me talk or heard uh, speaking about the young eagle program, uh, where we take the kids for an introductory airplane ride. Again, not going to make pilots out of them all, but um, we're going to uh, at least give them that experience. <coughs> There's the, I think, the Aranka. A bunch of the kids that uh, uh, have flown in it. Uh, the gentleman who owns that airplane has flown, I don't remember the exact, Paul, do you remember what, uh, 600 something? Yeah, it's over 600. Over 600 kids, one at a time, in that airplane. So uh, it's uh, it's quite a thrill. So that's uh, that's our EAA uh, and our chapter system. And when I looked at the website, uh, it said that uh, you wanted something on Oshkosh. Um, I offered my grandson an opportunity to go to Germany this past year. It was his graduation from high school. I figured we would uh, do something together. And he said, no, Pa, I want to go back to Oshkosh. So he'd been there several times, both for the summer camp that they have up there and uh, uh, for the uh, fly-in. So I said, well, throw me into that briar patch. And off we went to Oshkosh. And uh, I'm the short one. This is just a portion of the chapter uh, that we were able to get together uh, at the, at the um, um, site to get a picture. Uh, there were a couple of unusual airplanes. Well, I think everyone recognizes a B-17. This was a, a small B-17. Uh, they called it the Bailey Bomber. And uh, the gentleman built that. He thought it was going to take him uh, five years, took him 17 years, <laughs> but uh, it has four Rotax engines in it and he did a marvelous job. He flew it in and uh, it always had quite a crowd around it. I caught it in the evening or in the morning and got the picture without too many people. And you can see the engines, the four Rotax engines. Rotax are the engines that they put in a lot of snowmobiles. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it flies. <laughs> okay, there were there were a lot of unusual airplanes. This airplane uh, caught a lot of attention. It's uh, it's two airplanes Siamese together at the wingtip. Did it not come up? Oh, I'm this was an unusual aircraft. It's uh, two Russian. Uh, SU-55s that they sign these together at the wing. And you can see in the pointer, might as well use it. They joined the two aircraft right along the center here and um, put a jet engine underneath. So it had two reciprocating ro um, radial engines that were plenty powerful and a jet engine. So uh, the uh, performance of it was pretty spectacular. Came back and said, hey, who can be so lucky? <laughs> Alright, so that was uh, that was quite an airplane, and it had unbelievable performance. Well, I say it came back, it, it just still doesn't want to switch. 
<laughs> okay. Another pass. We'll just have to do it this way. Okay. Uh, just a couple passes. The airplane had an unbelievable performance. Uh, it would climb straight up as high as you could see it. Um, and uh, everyone was pretty impressed with it, but I don't think I would want to fly it. There were a lot of simulators there. There was also a project where um, they were building an RV-12, which is what we're building down in uh, Hangar 6. They were going to build it in one week. They accomplished that. They built it in one week with a lot of volunteer help and flew it at the end of the, uh, the, uh, the convention. Um, they say they can build it in 900 hours. We've got 25, 2600 hours in ours. So, but then again, we stand around and have cake and cupcakes and <laughs> coffee in the morning and go out for lunch early. So, uh, I don't know. That's, uh, uh, they had an area where you could uh, pull rivets before you actually worked on it. And they had uh, volunteers working that had signed up. I had signed up for it. They had so many volunteers. They had 3,000 people volunteer. I said, well, I've had enough experience working on it. I'll pass. But they were there, and they were lined up to just pull a rivet or do whatever on this RV-12. There you can see it with the, uh, the engine on it. And what it looks like in the back. Nice airplane. We hope to fly it in my lifetime. <laughs> uh, the antiques, well, that one they should have pulled out. Uh, this was a gorgeous airplane. It's a travel air. Uh, I don't remember the year, but it was much, much better preserved than when it came out of the factory. A uh, gentleman by the name of Kermit Weeks from uh, uh, down in the, in the Tampa Bay area of Florida brought up eight. World War One aircraft. This was uh, the Albatross that he had as a Mercedes engine. Uh, it was actually built by um, a gentleman down in New Zealand. It's not an original, but he has some original World War One aircraft. And uh, again, magnificent restorations like this one. It was a Scout. If you notice, it's hard to see perhaps, but they're pulling the prop through to start it. But there are two people there. There's so much compression on this uh, rotary engine, not a radial. The uh, next slide shows one. It's an unusual engine. If you look, there are valves. There's one valve per cylinder, and the entire structure of the engine turns. The propeller is secured to that so that as the propeller turns, so do the cylinders. So it had uh, that same type engine in that Scout, but it had so much compression and so big that two people were required to, to uh, pull it through to start it. There were a lot of restor um, restorations and, and um, um, I forget the word I want. I mean, this guy was a character. He was a uh, World War I reenactor, and uh, I thought he was going to start the war over again. <laughs> uh, and as a surprise, the Navy, the military wasn't showing up at air shows this year because of the uh, budgets, but um, the Blue Angels were on their way somewhere, so they made a couple passes uh, over the field, unbeknownst to anybody, <laughs> of course. <clears throat> it got awfully quiet, and we were wondering why uh, airplanes were, uh, were on the ground, and then all of a sudden over they came. <laughs> oh, that's a good Some people don't like airplanes, but they like hot rods. <laughs> Again, I don't know if I would ride in it, but somebody would try, I'm sure. That was actually a Chevy engine. Um, they have a, a seaplane base not far from uh, the main runway, and it's, it's very, very laid back. It's a completely different environment than uh, the main flight line and the main Oshkosh uh, gathering. Um, they, uh, they have their own little world there, beautiful aircraft, home builds like this one, I'm sorry, um, home builds and um, antiques like this one, and they fly off the lake, and uh, you can go for rides, you can go for a ride around the lake and, and uh, see what's there. 
Again, the, um, the antiques, I, I tend to like the, the antiques and classics um, most of all, and there were just anything you can imagine would be there. This was an unusual one. It's a Czechoslovakian uh, Wilgo, Wilgo, and uh, it uh, performed in the night air show. Uh, on Wednesday and uh, Friday nights, they do a, a night air show, which is most spectacular. Uh, this year, they had to postpone Wednesday and maybe Thursday. But uh, normally, this uh, aircraft has a 200 horsepower engine in it. He didn't think he had enough performance, so he put a turbocharged jet in there. <laughs> he had plenty of power. Uh, the night air show, uh, you can see the airplane at the front, but they put pyrotechnics on the wings, and, and uh, of course, launch it from the air, and it makes it uh, quite a spectacular sight. Uh, they had uh, 70 drones in formation this year. And I wasn't in a good location to get a good picture of the drones, but being a model flyer, not really crazy about drones, uh, I have to give them a lot of credit. They, they program these uh, drones to fly in, in synchronous uh, formation. And um, it's pretty interesting. It's just the beginning, I'm sure. And they do what's called a, a wall of flame. It's part of the uh, Warbird um, uh, flyovers, you know, they drop bombs. Now, they fire off cans of gasoline. You can feel the heat from across the runway. And uh, some of the British uh, bombers were there. That's an unusual. It's got a lot of balsa wood in it. If anyone ever built model airplanes, you know, we built them with balsa wood. This one was built with balsa wood. And of course, it's uh, the Spitfire, very famous. Tiger Cat, unusual airplane, there were two of them there. Uh, we're building one of the BD-6s with the kids, or the kids are building it. And you get an idea of the size with my grandson uh, standing in front. I should have him stand a little bit to the side so you can see the rest of it. But... I, I could get in, but I couldn't get out. <laughs> That's the uh, RV-12 that we're building. And a very nice airplane, two-place aircraft, home built. Lots of new technology. Now, whether we'll get the flying in our lifetime, well, I'd certainly like to hope we will. This one was, um, I don't remember who, uh, who had this. Uh, oh, uh, NASA was showing this one. Obviously, it looks like a helicopter with, uh, uh, that's been Siamese with a drone. Uh, this was an interesting, uh, anything that was a simulator, they brought, this is a bird, you got to flap your arms once you got into it and uh, you sort of launched off a, a building in um, Times Square and you had to land in um, Central Park and it's a VR type of uh, demo and uh, this was Boeing, so uh, Boeing spent a small fortune building this bird simulator with somebody's money. <laughs> Uh, another one, they've flown this one. This one's a uh, carried uh, uh, man and it has flown. Uh, I don't know if it was in hover. They didn't fly it at Oshkosh, but um, uh, it does fly. It's uh, someone else's concept of uh, what a, uh, uh, a drone might look like to carry people. Not me. <laughs> another drone, um, four motors, electric. A lot of electric this year. Uh, if you don't uh, believe it, uh, electric aircraft are not far from reality. Uh, they've got them flying two and a half, three hours, which is fine for a trainer. More simulators. This one um, um, was a uh, simulator for uh, uh, instrument approaches using VR and uh, heads-up display. From the museum, you can see out over uh, Pioneer, over towards Pioneer Airport, and some of the aircraft that they have there. We had one of our members who uh, does the uh, newsletter, uh, win a national award for the, the chapter newsletter. So they had a, a breakfast for the awards. I thought they took some of these slides out, and some of the numbers real quick. Um, 5,000 volunteers, just like uh, um, 
Dayton or any other activity, if we don't have volunteers, we don't have the activity. Uh, there were 10,000 aircraft without the military present on the field. Uh, 19,688 aircraft mo uh, movements, takeoffs and landings in the course of the, uh, the week of Oshkosh. Uh, I'm not going to read all of it. Uh, I thought the interesting thing was uh, there were 12,300 aircraft camping, people camping with their airplanes. Now, I didn't get a picture this year because we, uh, I just didn't get out in that area. But last time I was there, we were um, living in a house that was very close to the entrance, uh, what do they call it? Uh, um, no, where the aircraft camping is. And there were a group of people camping with a Learjet. Now, that's <laughs> called dedication. <clears throat> if you can afford a Learjet, maybe you can afford the Marriott. <laughs> but it, it's more fun to camp with your airplane. Um, 867 exhibitors. Lot of, uh, lot of people, about uh, 800,000 people during the course of the, of the week. Now the way they measure that, just like any other convention, if you attend seven days of the uh, convention, they count you as seven people. So you have to interpret what that really means in, in actual people. No one can go to Oshkosh without uh, stopping at uh, Artie, and, uh, Artie and Ed's. Uh, we were there three times, and if I uh, if I had worked it right, we'd have been there every night. Artie and Ed's is an original ice cream stand, and it's fabulous ice cream. It's homemade ice cream. The girls are on roller skates, and uh, they'll come out to the car, take your order, bring it out, put it on the window, just like uh, they used to do. Uh, and uh, during Oshkosh, uh, it fills up. Last year, they had a bunch of the um, flying cars. I think there were four of them that taxi or drove over from the air show to Artie and Ed's uh, for ice cream. So <laughs> they could have flown over, I guess, but they drove over. So that's the end of it, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to uh, pass on them. Okay. So uh, you, you mentioned that electric seems to be coming about. What sort of range in terms of, I guess, flying time are you getting out of electric currently? Right now there are two and a half, three hours, maybe slightly more, depends who you ask. These are two-place aircraft, they're very light, they're light sport aircraft. Uh, they probably weigh less than a thousand pounds, I know they do, they're less than a thousand. Uh, Phillips, no, no, Siemens in Germany has developed a lot of the engine uh, or motor technology um, lithium-ion batteries, Boeing's working hard on it. There are a lot of manufacturers that are working very diligently. They say that they can fly the electric-powered airplane for about $17 an hour, as opposed to 75 minimum per hour for 152. This is a new airplane versus a 30-year-old, 40-year-old airplane. And uh, the noise from the engine, is it comparable to uh, fuel, or...? Unfortunately, no. That, that sound of right, round engines and, and the internal combustion goes away with the electric. So it's a lot quieter. A lot quieter. For Oshkosh, what is the most popular airport in Oshkosh? Is it the Oshkosh Airport? Yeah. Yeah. How do they manage that? It's the uh, busiest airport in the country, or in the world. Uh, for that one week period. No one speaks, supposedly. That's, it, some people get excited and think of you, you sort of form a conga line, and um, they have reporting points where you have to fly over. It forms that line, and then the FAA controllers actually announce, you know, um, you know red session to land on the orange dot. Or, you know, they, ha they have two parallel runways. They can land four airplanes four airplanes per runway at a time so they can get them in and out because a lot of times they come in as a group of say all the Cessnas, all, they have Cessnas to Oshkosh and they'll come in with a couple hundred Cessnas all on a Congo line and, um, and land. <coughs> Knock on wood, there haven't been a lot of incidents. <laughs> you know, if, if you're the one, it's 100%. But no, it, is, it works well. Uh, pilots listen. 
the FAA speaks and they tell you, you know, you'll land here or, or go around or they'll put you in a holding pattern. Um, and it works. It, it's, uh, it can be a little scary the first time, but um, they've been doing it for, I don't know how many years, you know, more than I can remember. Tell us a little bit about this chapter. What the property here, and how many members you have, and what, and of course, we know you play three days a week. So what else do y'all do? Well, the question is uh, how many people make uh, uh, the EAA chapter work? I would normally say about half, but it doesn't work <laughs> out to that. That was an old joke. How many people work for Canon? About half. <laughs> um, we've got. Uh, last year we had 330 at the end of the year. Uh, this year we're, uh, we're 290 something. I don't remember what the actual number is, but it's up to close to 300. It varies year to year. <coughs> and uh, activities at, of course, the pancake breakfast, uh, which helped pay for the operation. Bars helps pay for the operation. We thank you very much. This hangar doesn't get used nearly as much as it, uh, uh, it could. Um, uh, guards uses it. We use it maybe five times, four, six times a month, and uh, the rest of the time it's dormant. Most of the activity is up in Hangar Six. Did I? Oh, I don't remember the rest of the question. Well, so what? What does the club do? You build an airplane. What are the activities of the club? Well, we like to do flyouts because there there are lots of activities around. Uh, we go for what they call a hundred hour, it's now the two hundred hour hamburger. By the time you're done, that hamburger costs you two hundred dollars. <coughs> um, we, um, we do a lot of youth uh, outreach. Uh, uh, we have the summer camp, we have the Young Eagles, of course, and the build program. And then we have scholarships that um, we award to the kids uh, for learning to fly. And that's primarily what it is. It's, it's a social Club. When are we going to see the B-17 again? That's a good question. It's out on the west coast uh, this year, uh, or at least now. Uh, went from Oshkosh West. Um, so I don't know. There are actually two of them that the, the EAA has. Uh, aluminum Overcast <coughs> is the one that's best known. And then, um, I can't think of the name of the other one. But uh, all your... Isn't the other one Fifi? No, no, that's a B. Oh, that's a, a, a B29. That's a B29. Yeah. Last year there were two B29s in the area at Oshkosh flying. This year just uh, the one. Do you have any plans to bring that back? Uh, we have plans to bring it back. Uh, we're looking at it. Uh, we're looking at it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you know, and not just there for social to see things. I can't give you a number. I can give you an example. We have one young fellow, uh, Alex Kirkland. He is uh, 16. He just got his eagle. And Alex is an avid RC modeler. He eats, lives, and dreams airplanes. He soloed in three and a half hours. Okay, that's a, an exception. Um, He's really involved with aviation. Um, and the model flying has certainly helped. He knew what to do with the airplane, what it was going to do before he got in. And he also rides with a lot of the, uh, the guys here when they go someplace. Uh, you know, he'll wash an airplane to go flying, which many of us did um, back when you could get into an airport without having to cross a uh, electric fence or <laughs> climb over the fence. Uh, we. We've got um, a couple young ladies that have soloed. Uh, we've got um, one young fellow, I didn't put his picture in there, got his license through the chapter, through the programs that we have. He's now flying, um, uh, he's, a, he's in the na uh, Navy. Yeah, he's a Navy pilot. He's a Navy pilot, <laughs> training. Yeah. Uh, so, to answer your question, not all the kids that we... Uh, they get involved with are going to find that uh, that interest or that passion. 
But if we don't open the door so that they can experience some of it, they won't know. Now, you know, you can fly, you can do maintenance, you can do a, a power, you can do all sorts of things. There are a multitude, I don't know how many jobs involved with aviation or in aviation. So not all of them are going to have that same passion. But as adults, be it in ham radio, with electronics, aviation, whatever, if we don't get the kids involved, we don't replace ourselves. I had a, a flight instructor tell me, he was an uh, Army, Army Air Force uh, instructor, he said, if you enjoy what you're doing, help somebody else get involved. And, and that goes for any passion. Look all the way in the back. Yeah, what is the significance of the, the call sign for your for your club? That before L said you? Yeah. Well, the airport here, every airport around the world has a designator. The designation for Lawrenceville Airport is L Z U. So when we uh, decided we we had thirty five hams in the chapter at one point in time. Not all of them were active, but we hope to get them active at one time. Uh, so we set up a station, got a, a special call for it, based on uh, LZU. I screwed up. It was W4. It could have gotten K4. Designators of airports in this country begin with K. I wasn't thinking. Any plans for the airport here that you're aware of? Yeah, we'd like to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that opens up a good question, so I've told Norm and a couple others. Um, our lease here uh, was for, I think, 25 years. Uh, my wife was the treasurer when we built all eight hangars, and we didn't foresee the need to have a longer lease at the time. I mean, I'm not sure they would have given us the lease. We have the lease on all eight hangars. We don't own all eight hangers. We only own this one and uh, hangar number six. Um, the airport is going around. Uh, they've told uh, uh, some of the other hangar owners, uh, some of the T hangers, that they're going to have to leave. Uh, I think it was premature. Uh, there's a, a group at uh, Barranco who has, uh, I don't know how many hangers on the field that they lease. They weren't going to renew the least. But, you know, you drive in, you've been driving in for a couple of years. That ramp is empty. Where are all the airplanes? If they don't renew people's leases, this place is going to be totally desolate. So, they're going to renew our lease for both this hangar and number six. Uh, what they'll do with the others, uh, we think that the Civil Air Patrol, they have to move from where they are in the Quonset Hunt over on the other side. They will probably take one of those. Not 100% sure, but that's the rumor. They'd like to be over here with us on this side. Uh, the others, I don't know. So we'll, we're going to be here. The airport wants us here. Uh, that's all well and good until they put the money sign at the bottom. And we don't know, because we have uh, special rates from you know that we're, grand, we're not grandfathered into. But the FAA does make provisions for special rates for aviation organizations. So we have to wait. We don't know. We haven't heard from uh, the, 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 actually it's the county. So. No? Follow up question on that. I understand from the Super Bowl, this is one of a couple of airports outside of 285 that going to be very popular for what, What's a Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Some big game with a... Oh, a uh, high school football? <laughs> <laughs> now, I understand it's supposed to be one of the popular airports yeah. for clients, for VIPs, yep. for corporate people, for the people. Um, they will have to make a reservation to come in because all the spaces that are here that they'll allocate will be on reservation. Uh, it will probably fill up for that just one day, the Super Bowl? Yeah, one day. Um, well, it's a weekend event. A weekend event? I don't know. If it doesn't go around in the circle, it's lots of activity. At any rate, um, 
it'll slow activity down here uh, for that weekend or whatever period of time. How much? I have no idea. Uh, I can remember south of here when they had the race at, uh, at Hampton. Uh, reservations are in order. You can't just fly in. You can't fly out without a reservation. To, uh, get out it has to be under instrument rules. But it's workable. It's workable. Same thing at PDK. So, and we don't know yet. You know, no idea what they're doing. I think, good. Well, I'm glad that uh, I was able to show you a little bit about EAA. Come on out on a Saturday and see what the kids do. Uh, we'd love to have you out here. Breakfast anytime that uh, the first Saturday of the month. We always have a good program, and you're always welcome. What time, what, what time on Saturday? On that first Saturday of the month where they oh, eat the bre breakfast? Uh, eight, eight, the breakfast? Eight in the morning to, uh, you know, program's over by noon. Bill's, Bill's program with the kids is uh, uh, from 9 to uh, 1 every Saturday. Thank you.